Hey everybody, welcome back to Watch and Carry. So in today's video, I've got another mod, and this one is actually going out to a uh, customer who has requested me to do a full negative display on this watch. Uh, this is the Casio uh, DW291H. So it's quite a big watch, a little bit bigger than the uh, World Time, which you can see here on my wrist. Uh, so this will actually be the first time that I'm working with this, but I think most of the uh, layout for the parts on the inside will be the same. So uh, this is uh, pretty popular in the modding community, so I thought I'd go ahead and share with you how to make a full negative display with this piece. Uh, really quick wrist check. Uh, you can see here I have the uh, Casio AE1200. actually just modded this yesterday. This comes in the gold almost bronze looking version. And I have uh, these uh, new J's and K's 18 to 22 millimeter metal uh, strap adapters. And then I've attached to that this Uncle Seiko GL831 OD green 22 millimeter strap, and then put a uh, Barton strap uh, Barton Straps uh, metal bracelet in brushed black to kind of give it this OD green and bronze look. So pretty happy with this one. Um, I'll put the parts down in the description below in case you guys want to build this. And I also have a video uh, that I'll be uploading shortly on how to make that as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to the watch itself. I've already removed uh, the strap from this. If you don't know how to do that, check out my other videos. Uh, but we're going to put some uh, painter's tape over the face of this just to protect that relatively fragile glass that's there. And we have um, some screws here that we need to remove. So this is a pretty good watch uh, for any of you out there, but especially uh, some of you. Like I had a friend that was interested in getting a digital Casio, but he has a relatively large wrist and he just thought the world time was too small. So if, if you're thinking the world time is too small for your wrist size, this might be another option for you guys to pursue. Uh, lots of great straps that you can add to this aftermarket. And uh, the community has been posting up lots of really cool modifications for this piece, which uh, requires opening it up and changing out uh, for colored filters and negative displays and all that stuff. So um, if you want a bigger watch and still want to do some modding, this could be the watch for you. So here we have the uh, module on the inside here. This is our 12. This is our 6. So you can go to either side. <laughs> And you can take uh, some tool here and just gently lift up at that position and pry out the module. There it is. Almost the exact same size as the world time, actually. I wouldn't be surprised if it's the exact same dimensions. So pretty cool. We'll lay that to the side. Go ahead and turn this upside down. Give it a light tap. And then this is the masking. And this guy will pop out. And this also looks very similar to the World Time. I wonder if I have a World Time masking on hand to compare the size. No, well, it doesn't look like I have one, but that's how it looks. A little bit cleaner, not too much text compared to the World Time. Okay, so we will flip this back over. And we will take our case back and put that back loosely. And that will just prevent dust from entering in while we do the rest of this project. So let's focus now on the module. Okay, we need to disassemble this. So we'll flip this over. Actually, turn it back to this side. And you'll have, you can see here, some clips. One, two three, four, five, and six. Go ahead and gently pry those out. And you'll notice the display start to dim a little bit because you're separating the battery uh, from the module. There you go, just like that. Okay, we will lift this up, turn this over. Now with this side, what I like to do, 
noticing that these two contacts are at the bottom, go to this hole right here and there will be something inserted in there, or there should be. Uh, this is your spring hole, so I always like to mark my spring hole with a Sharpie mark because in the case that the spring pops off or falls off, which is very easy to do, it can be a little bit tricky to find out which hole the spring goes into, and that's important uh, to allow the alarm to uh, function. So circle that hole, make sure your spring is still in there, and this part we can set completely aside, and now we can focus on this half over here. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and lift up carefully on this part using uh, something wood in here, like a toothpick. There we go. Okay, and we can separate this board. Go ahead and turn this over and just note the orientation. Sometimes if this is your first time doing this, take pictures of each step so that way you know which way the parts go. So I know that these two contacts are at the uh, six o'clock position, the bottom here, and they should be facing me when I reassemble this. And that this black square should be facing these four black pieces here when I reassemble it again. So I'll separate that part out. Okay. And then now you're left with this part over here. You can take a pair of tweezers, gently lift up on this piece. Okay, set that to the side. Okay, and now we have our screen here. You're going to have this opaque piece of glass here at the bottom. Apologize for the runny nose, by the way. Allergies are <laughs> acting up today. So here's that piece. You'll take note that these teeth at the bottom are a little bit wider than these two at the top. So the big teeth go to the six o'clock position and you'll notice that the teeth have a uh, are, projection, are projecting on one side and they're flat on the other. So the side that's projecting should be facing towards you. There you go. Okay, and then we have our screen here. So to separate this, you're going to turn it to its side. You'll note that we have this half moon plastic spring here on the six o'clock position. So we're going to carefully put our fingernail on this part right here to pull that spring away and then push down with our other finger on the display. And that should separate it from the plastic housing like so. Okay, there you go. The good thing about the screen is we have this little target here at the top right so we know that that's gonna be our 12 o'clock position. And then with this plastic housing, you will have these two very important parts that you don't want to misplace. They look like tiny pieces of foam. Separate those out. Okay. And one part is longer than the other, so that makes it easy to figure out where, how to assemble this. And uh, the short part goes to the six, longer part goes to the 12. And then here's our housing, we can separate that out. Here we go, we've got our module. Now at this point, you'll see these graphics kind of going across the screen. You know, as you play around with this and you're touching it, it might pop up here and there. That's completely fine, uh, nothing to be worried about. Uh, we're gonna do an all clear at the end of this video with the battery, so that will uh, wipe the screen completely clean before we reassemble. Okay, so with our module here, we're gonna move to a towel, a clean microfiber towel. Okay, you're gonna need a few things for this. We're gonna need some uh, Q-tips here. Okay. 
you'll need uh, some Goo Gone. Just looks like that. And again, all these stuff will be listed down in the description below. You're going to need a small pin and then your trusty guitar pick. If you've done a few of my, uh, if you've seen a few of my mod videos, you see that I, I use this on almost all my negative display projects. On the guitar pick, I've kind of beveled the edge. I've used the knife to kind of make it even thinner uh, than on one end than the other. And I think that should be it. Uh, you'll also need your uh, polarizing film. We're using zero degree linear polarizing film. This happens to be an adhesive version. Okay, but you can also purchase this in non-adhesive. Okay, and a pair of scissors and a Sharpie. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with getting off the factory polarizing film on the display. So when it comes to this uh, display in front of you, it's easiest to think about this uh, by looking at my fingers on the left. So right now, my fingers on the left represent the display on the right. If we flip this display over like this, you'll see that my fingers show three layers, and that's exactly what you pretty much have here on the display. You have three layers. The topmost layer is gonna be my index finger over here, and what we're doing is removing, uh, this top layer is called a polarizing film. So from the factory, your display is going to have a polarizing film. What we're gonna do in this project, and I'm gonna lay this display down, is uh, take a pin, stick it in between the top polarizing film and the middle layer to create a little uh, opening, remove the pin, take our guitar pick, remove the factory polarizing filter completely off from the display, so that's gone. Then we're going to use some Goo Gone with our Q-tips to clean the glue that was holding that polarizing film to the top. Wipe the display completely dry. And then we're gonna take our zero degree linear polarizing film and set that back over the display. But we're going to turn it 90 degrees to one side so that instead of getting the regular display where you have the gray background and the black numerals, we're gonna have a black background with goldish yellow numerals, hence an inverted display. So basically we're taking a new polarizing film, turning it 90 degrees, and turning it that 90 degrees is what gives you the negative effect. Okay, so to get started here, we're gonna take our Goo Gone, and what I'd like to do is just go on all four edges, dip this in just a little bit and let that sit for a couple minutes. The Goo Gone is going to loosen the glue between the top layer and the middle layer and that's going to make it easier for us to wedge our pin inside. So I'm gonna wait for a couple minutes and come back. Okay, so it's been a couple minutes here. Here's our display. Okay, make sure you have that target facing you because you don't want to remove the uh, back layer by accident. Okay, we're gonna turn it to its side like this. And then I want you to notice here that there is this slightly longer edge. So again, with our analogy, this middle layer is slightly longer than the polarizing film on top. So you wanna look for this ledge. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drag our pin over the top polarizing film. You're gonna hear a click, which means that the pin falls onto the middle layer. And that tells you that you're in the right spot to push this pin inside and start wedging that top layer off. So we're gonna take our pin drag it across, you don't wanna to put too much pressure, and it's okay to scratch the top of the polarizing film because we're, we're removing it anyway, so just listen for that click. Can you hear it? There, okay, and it's better if you do this on one of the edges. Okay, once you found the right spot to be in, go ahead and put the display down and make sure you push the pin away from your other fingers and just push the pin enough just to get the very top portion of it in. 
So I'll do it off camera first and then show you what that looks like. Okay, there we go. So, just enough to make a small indentation there and you can kind of see the glue and that air bubble get created. Okay, push the pin in just a little bit more and then remove. Be very careful not to push the pin up in this orientation because you'll damage the uh, display below. So it should be parallel to the polarizing film. Now that we've got our little notch, you can take your guitar pick. And then what I do is I like to dip the prying edge of the guitar pick into some goo gone. Okay. Insert that beveled edge into the part where you place the pin and start rocking it back and forth. I like to do one end first and then move across the entire display. And that's the benefit of the, the guitar pick. It's thin enough that it can separate this very easily, but soft enough that you're not going to be damaging the layer beneath this polarizing film. Okay, you'll start noticing that the uh, the film start to get starts to look very dirty. That's actually the glue that's being um, uh, pushed by the guitar pick, and that's the glue that we have to use our Q-tips on later to clean up before we insert another polarizing film. Okay, go nice and slow here. No need to rush it. There we go. So that's completely separated. So here's our polarizing film that we've now removed. Okay, now I want you to notice that if I have it back in its original orientation over the screen, we have the typical uh, grayed out whitish screen, which is what you get from the factory. If I turn it 90 degrees, you see that we get the blacked out display. Now, if I was to put this factory film back on, and reattach the battery, we would get a real negative display, uh, which is what we're trying to do, that black background with the goldish yellow numerals. The reason why we need to get new film is because, as you can see, there is a bunch of factory glue on this polarizing film and on the display. Theoretically, you could clean this with Goo Gone on the polar polarizing film and then reattach this back, but it's going to take too much time. And also, if you were to orient this 90 degrees, it's not a true square. It's actually a rectangle, so it won't really fit. So it's just easier to buy new polarizing film and use that one instead. So that's the effect. Standard, non-inverted display, negative display. Okay. And this only works on one side. If we were to flip this over, okay. No, actually, you kind of get it in black. But uh, for the purpose of this video, it, it does matter. You have to be on the right side, and you have to be on the right orientation. So we'll uh, save this for later because that's what we're going to use to trace out our new polarizing film. So now let's clean up the glue on this guy. So take your Q-tips, and what I like to do is uh, already soak them inside of the Goo Gone, like this. So to the side, I have my Q-tips soaking, so that way they're ready to go. OK, 
Okay, take a Q-tip and we're going to lightly coat the top of this display with some Goo Gone. So be very generous at this point with the Goo Gone. Okay, and then I'm going to let that sit for again another two to five minutes and allow the Goo Gone to do its work. That will make the scrubbing uh, later on much, much easier. So I'll check back in. Okay, so it's been about five minutes here. You can kind of see the glue start to clump up already. Now you're gonna take your Q-tip again, saturated with a little bit of Goo Gone. And what we're gonna do is do gentle circles uh, to get that glue removed and loosened and then take our microfiber towel and wipe off that extra glue and then repeat again. So coat the display with Goo Gone. Rub it gently. Try to rub from the side of the Q-tip rather than the point, so that way you don't cause this uh, uh, the root of the Q-tip to uh, put unnecessary pressure on this layer of the uh, display. Okay, just kind of like that. See the Goo Gone work its magic there. All those little clumps are glue. I like to bring all these clumps of glue to one side and to the edge as much as possible. So in this case, I'm working from this side to this side. And then once you have a nice collection of clumps there, you can go ahead and uh, discard that Q-tip or use the other side. Take a clean microfiber towel and wipe in one direction. Again, I'm working from top right to bottom left, and so that's the direction I'm wiping in. This will just make it easier to wipe the glue off so that way you're not just spreading it all over the display. Okay, now we're working with a new side of our Q-tip, again, coated with the uh, Goo Gone. Saturate your display. And again, you can choose to wait two to five minutes before working on it. The more you wait, it will take longer, but the easier it will be to clean up the glue. All right, so that's what you're gonna do. We're gonna coat that in. We're gonna wait. Again, small circles. Okay, and then wipe the display. All right, so I'm gonna pause the video here and just keep repeating that same procedure. This can take a while, it can take five minutes, it can take 20. Uh, the key here is that uh, you want to get all these clumps completely off. The display should look brand new, completely clean. And in some cases, as you rub the Q-tip more and more, you'll start to hear the Q-tip squeak, which tells you you've already removed the glue and you're down to the glass layer, which is what we want. So I'll pause the video here and uh, check back in with you once this is all clean. Uh, one other tip I wanted to share with you is it can also help to use two different types of Q-tips. So I have the pointed one here and the standard Q-tip on my left. I like to use the standard Q-tip as your mop. That's what you can use to dab. It has more cotton on it, so it's much easier to saturate the display with the thick Q-tip first. Then you let that sit, and then once that's ready to go, you can take your thin Q-tip, which is much more precise, and then you can do the rubbing. So using two different types of Q-tips can also be helpful. All right, so this glue is, seems to be a, a lot uh, stickier 
than the glue on the AE1300 and 1200. So I've applied a generous amount of Goo Gone here. I'm following the bottle of the Goo Gone. I'm going to let that sit for a full 10 minutes uh, because I don't want to waste Q-tips and I'll... I have other stuff to do, so I'll, I'll let that sit and do its job chemically while I take on the next part of the project. So let's get to the negative display. Pull this off to the side. Okay, so with your polarizing film, uh, first and foremost, you need to understand what you have. Do you have a linear? Do you have a adhesive polarizing film or a non-adhesive polarizing film? Uh, so what happens here is I have adhesive, and usually what that means is if we hold the filter up like this and use my fingers as an example on the left, this is how it looks. If we turn it over like this, this is how it looks. So at the very top and at the very bottom, you're going to have these two protective layers, and these need to be completely removed at the very end of the project. On the inside, you're going to have the polarizing film. One side of that is going to be smooth and non-adhesive. The other side is going to be the sticky side that gets stuck to the display itself. So you just need to know which side is which because if you cut it improperly and you stick it improperly, you might end up putting the non-sticky side towards the glass, in which case it won't stick. And um, you also need to know, are you in the right orientation? As I mentioned before, it does matter whether you're on this side or on this side. It does make a big difference on the display. So let me kind of show you how to figure out whether you're on the right side. Let's put this here. Let's grab our display that's sitting for 10 minutes here. Zoom in a bit. Okay, so right now I'm on the right side of the polarizing film. I, I just know that from experience. So if I put this polarizing film over the watch, ignore those white marks at the bottom, you notice that the display gets black, right? If I go ahead and turn it 90 degrees, or it gets normal. If I turn this 90 degrees, oh, sorry. There we go, it's black there. Okay, now if I flip this to the other side, Okay, let me take a look here. You'll notice that I have these rainbow of colors. You see how there's like a little bit of pink in there. See, there's that bluish green. Okay, so what you can do is take your polarizing film, rotate it around 360 degrees, and make sure that you don't have that rainbowizing effect. If you do have that rainbow effect, that is the wrong side. You need to flip your filter over to get on the right side. Now that you figured out the side that you need to be on, you need to turn this 360 degrees and look for pitch black, the blackest shade you can get. So that's pretty black right there. That's even more. See, right there. Okay, so... I go here, it starts to turn light gray, light gray. So this is the orientation I want. This tells me the orientation that I want my filter in. Then you can go ahead and put this um, down over the display, assuming it's dry. And you can take your Sharpie and trace the shape of the polarizing film that you're going to need and then cut it out. Because this is still wet, I'm going to put this to the side. I'm going to take the... Uh, original factory polarizing film that I cut before and then put my new film over it and then I'm going to trace the size that I need to cut in Sharpie. There we go. 
Okay, just like that. Then what we're going to do is um, mark the top layer. So that way you know which side of the filter should be facing you right now. So I'm going to put a T here. Okay, and a T means for top. That tells me that that is the top layer that should be facing me because again, once we cut this out, if you drop the filter, you might not remember which side is which. Are we on this side or this side? So this helps us remember. And I'm also drawing the T in this orientation rather than, let's say, um, rather than in this orientation because this tells me that this is the orientation that the filter should be in front of my face. So uh, this is incorrect, this is correct, because this is how I trace it. So we'll erase that T here. Okay, and just put that T over there. Okay, and when we lift up like that, you can remove this filter, and now we have our polarizing film that needs to be cut. Go ahead and take a pair of scissors. And you really want to cut this exact. So uh, you want to cut more on the inside of the Sharpie line than the outside. When you're finished cutting this, you should be seeing no more outlines of the Sharpie. If you have that Sharpie mark uh, still visible, the polarizing film will be slightly larger than the one that you removed. And if it's slightly larger, when we reassemble the watch, it's going to pinch the polarizing film and it can cause air bubbles to form. So you really want to cut this exact so we take away the Sharpie mark completely. So a, a smaller, finer pair of scissors like these ones will probably be better than using like your kitchen shears. Okay, so there's our negative display. Okay, try to limit touching the uh, Sharpie marks because it will get smudged off. You'll notice that um, the Sharpie mark, if you turn it in the light, is quite shiny. If we were to accidentally drop this and look at the Sharpie mark like this, you would see that the Sharpie mark is kind of dull. So that tells you that you're not on the right side. It should be on the side where the Sharpie mark is uh, shiniest. Okay, we'll set that guy to the side. Uh, oh, also take a look at your cutout. Make sure you don't have any Sharpie marks along the perimeter. So this one looks pretty good. I have just a few over here on the top right. Okay, but otherwise it looks great. Set that guy to the side. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes. Let's go back to our display that we're trying to clean up here. It's been sitting. We're going to take our pointy Q-tip. Oh yeah, much, much easier now to wipe this glue. Okay, take your towel and wipe in one direction. All right, so I'm going to keep doing this. Uh, this one's going to take a little bit longer, and I'll chime back in once it's done. 
Okay, so this particular watch is, I don't know if this is just this unit or if it's in general, but this is quite uh, difficult to get the glue off. Definitely possible, but it's going to take a lot longer in my experience than it does on the world time. So just keep going at it, you know, be patient. Using our fat Q-tip here, saturate the area. You can wait or choose not to wait. The longer you wait, the easier it gets. Take a saturated, finer Q-tip. Kind of rub the glue in circles towards one side. Pay particular attention to the edges of the display because that's uh, commonly missed when you're rubbing this and that's where the glue tends to build up. Okay, you'll notice that the more you do this, the smoother your strokes are going to feel, which uh, tells you you're making progress here. Okay, you can see I changed out my towel for a brand new microfiber. You don't want to use the same side uh, too often because you're just going to start putting old glue back onto the display. You know, rub in one direction. Okay, if you have some good light above you, you can kind of turn the display in the light and it should seem nice and clear. You'll see this is not completely clear. We have a lot of smudge areas there which are which is the glue see that looks clean from far away but when you turn it in the light still very dirty and again as I'm rubbing my q-tip here I don't have that squeaky sound yet so still have a little bit of ways to go here Okay, so I think I've finally gotten to the base layer. This is about 30 minutes now of trying to clean this up. So a little bit of elbow grease here, but let me show you what I mean by that squeaky sound. So coat with the fat Q-tip. Take our thin Q-tip and start rubbing. Kind of hear that? So that tells you you are almost done. You're, you've kind of removed that glue and you're at that bottom layer. At this point, I would uh, decrease your pressure in the Q-tip. Make sure you're not rubbing the harder part into that you know, naked display right now. So be a little bit lighter with your strokes, less pressure and more um, concentric circles to to remove this off, clean part of our towel, wipe this clean. Okay, let's go ahead and look at this in the light, turn it. Okay, you see how the display is much more uniform, less smudges. Okay, let's wipe it a little bit more. Okay, so let's see if I can get this on camera. There we go. See how the center looks really good. We still have some smudges here at the edges. That's where the uh, glue tends to accumulate. So we're going to focus now on the uh, edges. Okay, let's do one more.
All right, let's take a look. Okay, still a little bit of wet. Let's flip our towel over. Take a clean microfiber cloth here to really touch it up. The uh, microfiber towels, by the way, you can get these at your uh, auto store. Uh, there are two types of microfiber towels I've seen there. You have the types that are used for polishing, which really don't absorb very much liquid. And then you have the types that are more for drying the car and those tend to absorb liquid. So I recommend you get the ones that are non-absorbent, more for detailing and for used with waxing, because we're not trying to uh, absorb the goo gone from the display, we're trying to wipe it off. And so uh, in my case, it's a little bit more effective to wipe it off with something that's non-absorbent. But when you get to the finishing part where you've removed most of the glue off and now we're just trying to dry the display, then you can have another microfiber towel that's more absorbent. And then I touch it up with a very fine microfiber cloth, something similar to what you would use for uh, cleaning uh, glasses. And this just removes the, uh, the rest of it. But this needs to be completely dry. Uh, make sure you also focus on dabbing the edges of your display because we still have two layers on this display and uh, sometimes they can cling to a little bit of that goo gone on the edges. So you wanna make sure that those are dry. And then you want to clean the back of the display as well. Okay. Make sure we get everything off there. Fold your cloth as you keep rubbing, working on a fresh side. Okay, so let's take a look at the display now. So if we turn in the light, perfect. You see that? Nice and shiny. Really rotate it all the way around in the light to make sure you don't have any hidden edges with glue. The reason why you want this completely clean is it's going to make for a more adherent surface when you put your polarizing film down. Even if you have a little bit of clump of glue in the corners, it may not affect the way the filter looks when you reassemble the watch, but over time that'll allow a little bit of a gap between the polarizing film and this bottom display air will get in there and then that display can slowly uh, separate over time and, and give you some air bubbles. So you really want to make a nice uh, clean surface, all right? Uh, what I'd also recommend you do at this point, uh, again, with a cleaner cloth, just like when you prep a surface for a, a uh, something adhesive, take a little bit of alcohol. Alcohol, of course, is safe on electronics, so it's okay to just pour this directly onto the display. Small coating like that, turn it around. Okay, and then take a clean part of your cloth, rub that off. Alcohol evaporates very quickly in the air, so this will be a little bit easier to dry. Okay, go ahead and dry your edges there. Try to minimize at this point touching the, dis the uh, front part of the display with your fingers. Okay, move to a different side of your cloth and clean it one more time. And there we go. Nice and clean. So let's go ahead and uh, clean our work area here. Go ahead and take your uh, new polarizing film. Make sure that 
that of course is dry as well. Set that off to the side. And we can put these cloths away for now. And get back to our normal workstation here. Okay, so now we have to put the new polarizing film onto the display. Okay, so take your display, make sure that the target is facing you uh, and that it's at the top right. That's your 12, that's your six. Take your new polarizing film, make sure that the Sharpie mark is shiny and not dull, that tells you you're on the right side, and make sure the letter that you wrote here, or the number, is in the right orientation uh, for you to read it. That tells you you're on the uh, right orientation to put this and make this a negative display. You can, at this point, lift this, put this over the display to confirm that you're in the right position. Uh, confirmation is the display should be uh, very, very black, pitch black. If you are in the wrong orientation, it would be light gray, which would be the factory orientation. So you want pitch black like that. Okay, to make it easier to lay this in, turn these sideways like that. Okay, I've already wiped that display with um, a microfiber towel just in case a little bit of dust got in there in the moment that we've been talking i'm going to take some uh, painter's tape painter's tape is great because it doesn't leave a residue and i'm just going to stick that over the top like that okay hold the display by the edge get that final edge in there and that's just to remove any possible dust uh, that might be in there. Okay, set that down. Take your polarizing film. Peel off the back. Be careful not to touch the under layer because you'll put a fingerprint on there. And then you want to lay this at the very top and align it with the topmost part of the uh, white part of the uh, display below. Okay, once you've lined up that top part, go ahead and apply a little bit of pressure and you wanna lay this down from left to right. So I'm laying down the left first and I'm rolling my finger in this direction to apply the rest of it and then follow up with the edges. <coughs> okay. At this point, we now have two layers on this new polarizing film because we've removed the backing, uh, which was the sticky side. So we're gonna take a dry Q-tip. Okay, clean, no liquid and we're just going to use the side of it to work inside to out, inside to out, and what that's going to do is remove any possible air bubbles. The air bubbles will be hard to see at this point because we still have that protective layer at the top, but you wanna keep that protective layer intact as you're doing this rubbing because you don't want to add um, abrasive swirl marks to the fragile uh, polarizing film below. You might see some white uh, or yellowish um, uh, marks start to appear in the displays you're rubbing. That's completely normal. Again, we're going to factory, uh, we're going to hard reset this um, before full assembly and that will help those to disappear. Okay, you also notice that there's a, a few exposed areas here, right there, a small one here. It's okay to have a very thin layer of exposed uh, screen that's not covered by the new 
polarizing film. If anything, it's good that you see a little bit of that because that tells you that your new polarizing film is not too large, that it won't be able to fit back into its factory housing. Uh, these clips right here, 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 and here, if the, uh, if the factory polarizing film is too large, it'll squeeze on those um, uh, wider parts of the filter and start to push up on them inward, and then you'll start to create areas for air bubbles. So it's okay to have your new filter slightly smaller than the, uh, than the original. Okay, now what we're gonna do is uh, keep your Q-tip and gently lift up on one end to remove that top layer of the polarizing film, like so. Set that down. Let's zoom in. You can see we have a huge air bubble there. So keep this um, layer that you just removed. And wherever you have an air bubble, you're going to stick this uh, film down and then use your Q-tip to uh, move that air bubble away from it. So that way you're not rubbing on the, uh, on the naked display. Okay, you can also take uh, your guitar pick, just make sure it's dry or a credit card, and gently work that air bubble to push it out. Okay, very, very light pressure because you don't want to cause any permanent scratches on that display. All right, grabbing a new Q-tip. Just lightly buff that out and carefully remove and let's take a look. Okay, so ignore that little character that's popping up there. That looks really good. Go ahead and turn the display in the light. So I'm gonna do this off camera so I can see a little bit more clearly in my face. Turn it left, right, up, and down. Okay, I can see a few air bubbles here at the top. So I'll take my protective film again. Focus on that area, push inside to outside. Okay, looks pretty good. A little bit of dust here at the top. Take a clean microfiber cloth. And wipe inside to out. Be very, very gentle with this. Very minimal pressure because the display can easily get scratched. Okay, let's take air blaster. Clean that up. Okay, and that should be good. Okay, and what you can do is take a Q-tip, go into one of these corners here, and gently push to look for that circle on the top right. You see that? I can see the, the roundness of that circle up here. There we go. It's appearing in the light slowly. There we go. So now I know that's my target. That tells me it's in the top right and that I'm on the 12 o'clock here, 6 o'clock here. All right, we're going to go into assembly now. So you'll take your white housing here. Okay, again, look for that half moon spring. That's your 6 o'clock position. Okay. Turn it to the side like this. Okay, these there are three clips, one, two, and three. Those should be at the top facing you. You'll take your display, rotate this 90 degrees to the left. Go ahead and insert the first end of it into these two clips here first, just underneath it, and then rest the right side on top of the uh, clip to your right. 
and you're going to go underneath, pull inside to out on that half moon spring, and simultaneously roll your thumb over to secure the display underneath that clip. Okay, if you're not able to do that, take a clean cloth so you don't put fingerprints on here, pull back on the spring, and push down on the cloth. To secure it down like that. Okay, go ahead and turn this in the light. And make sure that one, two, and three of those clips are sitting on top of the display. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, we're going to turn this back here. Again, two clips here at the top, that's your 12 o'clock. Take a clean cloth, turn it over like this. Grab your tweezers. Take the longer white strip here, turn it on its side, and insert that into the top. Lightly tap it down so it sits flush in its trough. Repeat for the shorter piece that goes at the bottom. Tap that one down as well. Okay, let me take a piece of tape here. Put this over the display so that way I can work over a gray surface so that way you're not blinded by the, uh, the white towel there. So that's better. Okay, then we're going to take our opaque piece of glass. Look for these two larger teeth that should be pointing towards the bottom. And then turn it on its side and the projection of those teeth should be facing towards you. Lay that down. Make sure it sits flat. Take this piece. Make sure the four black pieces are facing you and sit this one down. It doesn't matter if you put this side on this or this side on that. It's perfectly fine to put it either way. You just need to make sure that those black pieces are facing you. Next, we're going to take our board. Look at these two contacts. They should be pointing down, and the black piece here should be facing the other four black pieces here. So we're going to turn it down like this, set this down, take something that's non-metal, lightly tap this down, and you're going to notice a white tooth appear here and a white tooth appear here, which tells you that that's situated properly. Go ahead and take your last piece here. These two contacts should be facing you and at the six o'clock position. Make sure your spring is inserted inside. Here's a look at that spring. You'll notice the spring is wider at one end and thinner at the other. The thin side goes down first into that hole that we marked earlier with the Sharpie. Okay. Without that spring, you don't get any sound on the alarm on the uh, on the watch. Okay, we're going to take the right side, gently turn this over, and push this down to the housing. Flip it over. Go back to our six clips and push those in. Should be hearing a small clicking sound. Okay, and that tells you it's nice and secure. Then to reset this, also called a hard reset, which you would usually do with a battery change, you're going to turn this over and you're going to look for a hole that's called AC. See it right there? You're going to take a bent paper clip and have one end slightly longer than the other. The longer end is going to go into that hole marked AC. The other end is going to touch any other metal part on the back of the watch. So 
there's the AC. Here's the longer tip going into the AC hole. And then the other part I'm just going to touch here for the metal. And what that's going to do is it's going to hard reset the display so that way any of those random indices that were popping up earlier are completely wiped out and the display will be clear and the time will be set back to midnight. So let's, uh, or 12 o'clock. So let's take a look now. At our display. And there you go. Actually, let's do one more hard reset here. I might have... Sometimes if you put a little bit of pressure on the display, it can cause some random indices to pop up. So minimize touching the front and hard reset it again. There we go. Okay, so once that's done, uh, you'll notice that the display now is, is inverted. So a couple of things to note here, your characters, your characters will appear in this goldish yellow font, which is uh, normal. You will have the seconds counting down still from left to right, okay? You'll have the uh, day of the week, the month, and the day of the month in that goldish yellow. Your analog clock here uh, will have the hour in the middle, the minutes, just above that and the seconds counting around it. So you'll see the seconds here hand. It's counting slowly if you follow my toothpick. The hour and the minutes are slowly separating from each other as we get away from 12 o'clock. So that will separate over time. But you do lose that target character that was pre-printed onto the uh, display. As far as I know, there's no way to make that target display appear with a negative display, only when, it ha when you have a positive display. The good thing about this mod, though, is if you don't like this look, you can go ahead and convert this back to a standard display that you got from the factory. You would repeat this whole job, but again, you would orient your polarizing film 90 degrees back to its original way and, and get the, the normal appearance of this display. So really cool looking, uh, very, very similar to the uh, world time, AE 1200 and AE 1300. Okay, let's get our parts ready to go. So we have our masking here. We have our case, uh, turn the case over so you know which side is the 12 o'clock and which is the six. So uh, here's the uh, illuminator. So turn it over this way. Like that, take our case back, set that guy to the side. Okay, we're going to take our uh, case first, turn it upside down and off camera, I'm gonna blast this from underneath with the glass facing me to take out any dust. Okay, set that down. Take our watch module. Blast that, take our masking, and blast that as well, okay? Next, take your case, flip it over, turn to its side, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Take your masking, turn it over. Top uh, red circle should be at the top left. Flip it upside down, insert this back in, lightly tap the masking. Take your uh, watch module, turn it, turn it one more time like this, and set this down inside like that. Okay, important part here. You'll have one, two, three, and four clips. You'll notice that as I push these buttons, they interact with these really long clips. See that this is one clip here, one contact, another contact, another contact. So that contact needs to sit behind the pusher. So what you'll do is you'll put a little bit of pressure with one finger and then push on this contact towards the center of the watch. Like that, while applying pressure, like that. And you'll notice that the watch module sits down more flush into the case. And that allows our pushers to work properly with the watch module. Okay, if you have the O-ring that uh, accidentally fell out, just make sure you reinsert that O-ring back. Okay, the O-ring goes into this little trough here. If this is an older watch or a used watch, make sure that the O-ring has a little bit of a glisten to it, which means it's well lubricated. If it's not well lubricated, take 100% silicone oil, which you can get off Amazon, and give a very light coating to that and set it back inside. Take your case back, orient it in this fashion, and set that down, like so. Hold that case back with your fingers, turn the watch over, 
Let's remove our tape for now. Okay, and push on the function. So I'm gonna start with the bottom left. That's working. Let's start with the top left here, or bottom right. Good. The top left is now working, and I think this one is the light, so test the light. That's how the watch looks in the light. You'll see that uh, everything appears now in orange or yellow or gold, even the analog clock hands. Okay, so now that we know our pushers are properly set in place, we can go ahead and now secure the case back. Take your four screws. Insert them inside loosely. Yep. Okay, loosely screw these down. Okay, loosely screwed down, go ahead and hold the case back, rotate this, and examine between the black case and the silver case back. Make sure the O-ring is not popping up at all. If it is, you need to remove these screws and reset your O-ring because that will compromise the water resistance rating. Now that everything is in place, fully tighten these screws till it gets a little bit firm, but don't over tighten because the threads in the uh, case are not made out of metal and it is possible to strip those uh, threads. Okay, so that looks great. Perfect, okay, home stretch here. We're gonna reattach our strap. Okay, I'm gonna turn this watch face down so I'm gonna take my tape back. Turn it like that, grab your strap, make sure that the 18 millimeter spring bars are still attached. 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, the long portion goes to the 6 o'clock position. What I like to do here is uh, push the spring bar longer in one side, insert that longer end of the spring bar into the hole of the lug of the watch, it's a little bit trickier to do it on this watch compared to the world time, so you might have to turn the watch at an angle. Okay, then you're going to take your spring bar tool, go to the end that kind of looks like a fork, and pry inward on the opposite spring bar. Okay, once that's in, push and jiggle the strap till you hear a click. Okay, so one end is in, one end is not. Take our spring bar tool again, push inward. Okay, sometimes what you can do is you can hold the strap down like this, apply inward pressure with your index finger, and then go to that spring bar. And now if it's situated just above the hole, kind of pry inside to out to kind of force it into that hole. It's a little bit trickier because the, the end links of the strap are are, um, are solid compared to the uh, world times, which are a little bit easier to work with. So just kind of push on that. Now this top one is a little bit tricky to get in. There we go. So sometimes you might have to uh, use your spring bar tool to set that spring bar in place. Repeat for the other side.
One other way is just kind of maybe keep the spring bar even actually. Set this part of the strap down in that um, gap for the lug and then pry inward on both sides of the uh, of the spring bar while holding it in place so a little bit tricky to do. This is too tricky I guess for this job you actually don't need to remove the strap from the watch. Maybe you can keep it in place but for me uh, I kind of like to separate my parts out while working it so if this seems too difficult maybe just ignore removing the strap before you begin this project. There we go. And take your spring bar tool, go to the spring bar and kind of push in to out. So like this, kind of make sure that spring bar is really set inside of its hole. And that should be it. Great. Let's grab the display for this. Actually, you know what? Let's put this on the wrist so you can kind of get a wrist shot. My wrist, by the way, is six and three quarter inches. So I'll give you a little bit of perspective. Oh, wow. Okay, so that is actually a good thing it happened on camera. <laughs> I tried to put on the strap, and as I lightly tugged on this adapter, it came off, which means the spring bar was not set properly in place. So, retape it again, put spring bar back in, and again, we have to repeat this. So, this is probably the trickiest part is getting the strap in. So, I correct myself don't remove the strap before doing this project, just leave it in place. No need to remove it. I'm so used to working on the world time where the strap is easy to work with, so this being my first time with this watch, I was not expecting it to be this difficult to get it in. I think they're yeah it looks like they're inside the hole but it's not going inside fully it's just partially in there so you might need the spring bar tool to push up push it the rest of the way into the lug okay so just be patient with it again give it a good tug Give it a tug and twist the strap, which I should have done to begin with. That really uh, tests whether it's in its hole. Okay, that looks a lot better. <laughs> Let's try this again. Okay, and here we go with a wrist shot. A little bit of fingerprints here on the glass. I'll take care of that in a little bit. It's a very, very cool watch. Very comfortable strap, actually. I'm kind of surprised. Usually the strap is a little bit skimpy, so. And there we go. 
Yeah, very soft. Actually, I think this might be the best looking neg negative display I've seen on a, on a Casio watch in a while. You know, when you're going with a negative display, it's more of a stealth look. So you really want stealthy, darker colors. And I think the red, the black, obviously, and the dark gun, almost like gunmetal gray around the perimeter. And just the fact this is a very beefy watch, almost like a military watch, gives this a very militaristic look that I think complements the negative display better than some other uh, Casio lines. So really, really uh, quite surprised with this. I've never really been a, a fan of this watch when I've seen it in Walmart. I, I've not wanted to buy one just because I didn't really like the way it looked. But having done a negative display on this now, I kind of like it. I think I might actually buy one. Really cool looking, despite the size. Again, six and uh, three quarter inch wrist. So it's just a tad big for my wrist. Um, not a big deal for me. I mean, I wear this uh, Casio Pro Trek, which is an absolute monster when I'm riding my electric skateboard. So uh, this one, I think, is is much more compatible. But anyways, guys, that'll do it for today's video. Again, all the parts are listed down in the description below. Um, if you have questions about going into a, into a negative display and reversing it back and polarizing films, just make sure you watch the video all the way through, especially in the middle parts of the video, because I try to explain it uh, clearly during those segments. But again, something that uh, requires a little bit of work, I would say probably a medium difficulty project. The hardest part of this for me was getting the glue off, which really wasn't difficult in terms of procedure, but just in time. It takes a lot more goo gone and a lot more time and a lot more waiting to get that glue off and then setting this bracelet in if you happen to remove it. But otherwise, I think a completely doable project that will really transform your watch and make it uh, a little bit more tactical and cool looking. Uh, please check out my Instagram, by the way. Uh, it's in the description below. Any comments or questions, again, put them down below. And as always, have fun, and I will see you guys on the next one.